Your question is uh, 2.5. So that question is, the Earth has a mass? This is actually exactly what I wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Earth has a mass of, I'm just going to draw the Earth, where the mass of the Earth is uh, 5.97. Then it asks, the average distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the Moon is 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. So this distance is 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. Okay. And it says, what is the gravitational force acting on the Moon due to the Earth? So do you remember what the formula for gravitational force attraction between two masses was? F equals G times G. Mass one. So if I write one and two, maybe one and two here, the magnitude of the force between one and two is going to be this universal gravitational constant. Mass one, mass two over the distance between them squared. Mm -hmm. So if I plug in numbers here, that big G was 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. And then, so I plug in numbers, um, I'm going to get that one two is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 3. Uh, 7.36 times 10 to the 22. And that'll be, and then the mass of the moon, or mass of the earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24, all over 3.84 times 10 to the 8, and then that whole thing has to be squared. And then the units will be in newtons. And uh, what, what do you get? 1.98872 times 10 to the 20th. 10 to the 20th? 20th. Yeah. Is that what everyone got? Okay, 1.98873. One yeah. And so it says, what's the gravitational force X? And uh, that's not the full force, you know, the force would also have a direction, so you would put that it's a, towards the Earth. So it's the same, right? It's towards Earth. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the direction of Earth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, <coughs> the clearly the, the moon one would be the same because all yeah. the same. Yeah. But right. it t towards in the direction of the moon. And it, but it would be in the direction of the uh, <laughs> and the uh, part C was how far away would the moon need to be for the magnitude of the gravitational force acting on it due, due to the Earth to be the same as the magnitude of the gravitational force of a 72 kilogram student sitting on their desk on the surface of the Earth. All right. So the distance that we're we want. We want to then adjust this distance between the moon and the earth. So I'm going to just do G, M1, M2, or mass of the moon, mass of the earth, over R squared. We want to set that equal to the weight yeah. of a 72 kilogram person. Which is 
be uh, I'm just going to call it M. M G. So I have everything in, in letters. Yeah. All right. So I got to solve for that R, right? Yeah. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by R squared. Cancel these. Then I'm going to divide through by M G. get G, mass of the moon, mass of the earth, over MG is R squared. Because i got to take square root, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I plug in, plug in numbers, what do you get? 2.038 times 10 to the 17. Billion times further away. I did. I did one a different way. I ended up solving for the force of between a moon and a person, uh -huh. and then plugged that into the equation. Oh, okay. Did I read the hmm? No, I got the same answer though. So you did the force between the moon and the person? I did the force between the earth and the person, oh, and then right. I plugged that force into the equation. I solved for R. You just plugged it in for F. And G. No, that's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. She just got the value. Oh, okay. For I see. I see. Yeah. So you found this. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. That's yeah. fine. That's what you have to yeah. do anyway. Yeah. Gotcha. Do we have to show it like that? Is it okay if we derived it, it with instead of MG, we just had F? F? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, I do that too. Yeah. Okay, and then C, a super... Okay. <laughs> Confusing. All right. C, C two. A supermassive black hole passes to the end of the solar system 1.2 times 10 to the 13 meters away. The gravitational force between an observant 79 kilogram astronaut and the bat black hole is 1 newton. What is the mass of the black hole? All right. So on this one, again, you're just going to use the same, the same stuff here, except now we have the astronaut and the black hole, and we know the force. So are we solving for the other math? Yes. So we have a black hole, and we have the astronaut. This distance here was 1.2 times 10 to the 13 meters. And the force, the gravitational force, was one meter. Mm -hmm. One in there. And so I write G, mass, of, I'm going to call this 1 and this 2. M1, M2. What are we solving for, by the way? M2. M2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Over that 1.2 times 10 to the 13 meters squared is going to be 1 newton. So if I want to solve for M2, I'll bring, I'll go bring everything over there. So I get uh, m one over M2 equal to, and then I'm going to bring that radius over. I probably, I'm kind of mixing algebra and numbers on this one, and I hate, that's not a good way to do it. So one newton 1.2 times 10 to the 13 meters squared. I'm going to divide 2 by gm1, so I get m2 is 1 newton. 1.2 times 10 to the 13 meters squared divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, which was millions times meters squared or kilograms squared times uh, 70, 79 kilograms. 
And what do you get? By the way, units work out because in the bottom, I, you know, this meter cancels to that, this meter squared cancels to that. You know, I have one over one over kilogram, which is just a kilogram. All right. So, so what did I get? What what what, what do you get? Two point seven three times ten to the thirty. What? Two point seven three times ten to the thirty fourth. Well, some I think is 1.99 times 10 to the 31. So this is over a thousand times heavier than the sun. Okay. So, yeah. so it makes sense? Good. Any other questions? Can we go over 2.4? Oh, boy. Too flexible. Okay, that's a good one. Two flexible balls rolling over a frictionless horizontal surface collide with each other. The larger of the balls weighs 50 grams and the smaller weighs 30 grams. Immediately after the balls touch, they, the center of mass of the larger ball is accelerating at a rate of 5 meters per second squared to the right. Okay. What is the acceleration of the center of mass of the smaller ball? All right, well, that's a confusing problem since we don't have talked about center of mass yet. But I think we can kind of get an understanding of it. I call this one and this <coughs> this acceleration here is due to the, the force on mass two by mass one. That, does that make sense? So this acceleration is due to the force <coughs> on this mass by the mass one. Now what do we know about the force on mass one by mass two? So it has to be the same magnitude. So I'm going to call this mass 2, mass 1. And I know that the force on 2 by 1, which we'll assume is in the x direction, um, is equal to m2, a2, assuming everything's in the x direction. And therefore that the force on, well, and we know all this, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be, what would be that force? So 50 grams times 5 meters per second, so 0 0.05 kilograms times 5 meters per second squared, 0 0.25 newtons, right? Yeah. Alright, so that's the force. Now let's see what the acceleration due to that force would be on mass 1. So force on 1 by 2. The magnitude of it would be the magnitude of mass 1 times the acceleration of mass 1, the magnitude of the acceleration. I guess we could say that that's in the negative x direction. So I could write force 1 to x is a1x, and then this is in the negative x direction. I get negative 0 0.25 newtons, 0 
zero three <coughs> kilograms times a one x. Solve for a one x. What do you get? Eight point three. Negative eight point three. Yeah, negative eight. Yeah, negative eight point three meters per second squared mm -hmm. equal to a one x. If I'm interested in just the size of that, I just get rid of that negative sign. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, I'll go ahead and collect homework. Is, it, is everyone's homework statement? Very important. Uh, yep. uh, the red button and then it's not hit it. 